Hello and welcome to the very 13th Brightcast episode. Not just the very 13th, the very final of this season. The season finale. It's a Christmas one, guys. The Christmas tree's up. We're getting festive. Yes, and we've left it too late for anyone to do anything about, but we look at Christmas marketing, what, what you can do. Can you learn from the big boys like John Lewis from their video campaigns? What we've been doing ourselves, what we've been advising our clients. Yeah. All good knowledge. You might be able to do something with it now, two weeks out from Christmas. At the very least, it'll stick in your brain for next year. Yeah, and if you can't, we do advise, just don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> Turn the broadcast off right now. Maybe even unsubscribe. And just get back on it. It's no dream. Still listen, but just have it low down. Get the Christmas music high over the top of it. And uh, just enjoy it. And because it's the season finale, guys, can I just say, it's been brilliant fantastic like kudos to the both of you for you know ignoring all of my crap jokes telling joe to cut everything that probably shouldn't be going in there yeah and just for you two for delivering actual value episode on episode thank you it's nice that one of us has enjoyed this and can we just do now and I, i'm hoping the listeners will join us just a 10 minute clap if you just That's probably enough. That's probably enough, right? Let's go. Let's go. Ho, ho. Welcome to the very 13th and very final Brightcast episode of this season. On the 13th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a Brightcast episode. That was lovely, guys. <laughs> Quick fire. Favourite Christmas movies, go. The Santa Claus franchise. Have you watched the new TV series? Yeah, it's not as good, but it's okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Rob, favourite film? Christmas uh, film? I've been enjoying quite bad ones so far, but I would say Scrooged with Bill Murray. Yeah. It, it, it is a bad one, but I, I enjoy it, and it's uh, it's got a nice nostalgic place from my childhood. Nice, nice. I would go Jingle All The Way. That's a good one. It's a great one. Or... Muppets Christmas Carol. For me, that's my favourite Dickens interpretation. Yeah. And on that note, what's everybody been on this week? I'll go first. I've been interviewing some people, which has been good. Lots of video editors with lots of different skills to bring to the game. Some production people as well, which is good. And aside from that, I've been out on shoots and really trying to catch up on marketing stuff for us for christmas which we'll, we'll get into a bit later our own marketing stuff our own marketing stuff yeah, yeah. favorite interview question from the interviews uh great great bit um i really enjoyed it where we start speaking about because of the size of the company you have to wear many hats and i pretend to drop my pen and i come up wearing a different hat uh that's good i think the longest people have gone without noticing is about four minutes and then just going wait did you have a different hat on earlier? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a no to that guy. That's just an area of improvement that we could work on with him. Yeah, yeah. Eye for detail. You've got you to be spying hats. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be spying hats. What about you guys? I've been on some strategy work and been writing a lot. So over the past week or so, it's been kind of head down into a Word document, sort of compiling our notes. Yeah. Um, and creating strategies for our clients for 2023. Yeah. It's a lengthy job, one that needs doing, one that's worth doing. Um, but yeah, it's time consuming. And what's been the biggest sort of thing you've noticed that you do differently now, maybe to the last year when you was running strategy things, what's been more of a focus this time around? A lot of people last year was kind of because of... The, the pandemic as well it was kind mm. of bringing out people's budgets as well because not many people had a large amount of budget last yeah. christmas say for this year so the budget's been higher for most businesses to go into next year yeah so yeah. it's sort of allocating the right budget for the right thing and making sure we're getting the roi for each of those yeah. and putting specific metrics to those so being able to track um vanity metrics as well so people obviously want to see more likes and interactions and comments. Yeah. But also the actual inquiry rate from that and conversion rate that yeah. we're getting from those things. Yeah, good point. I feel like I feel like there has been a bit of a change in the atmosphere where people have gone through survive 
Yeah. And now they're really looking to get into the thrive. Bit yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Of marketing. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Drew? Been, uh, I've been joining you on the interviews, obviously. Yeah. Um, but also been out filming all around the place. Um, yeah. we did a, a final shoot day on a project yesterday, um, for this year. And we've got another shoot next year for them. And then the edit's going to go into next year. And then another of the clients, we were on the second day last week. So we're going into the third day tomorrow. So yeah. then the final day tomorrow, and that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, just some really cool shoots. I was going to say they're two of my favorite clients, which they are. But I think we work with so many cool people. I think all the clients we work with currently are in my top favorite clients that yeah. we've worked with so yeah. far as a company in the seven years. Yeah. Just because they're, they're cool companies who... They either want to push things super creatively um, or they're just like super on it with production and kind of understand everything from a production point yeah. of view. So there's no like, you know, classic client faux pas or anything like that. Yeah, they like it when we bring a bit of ambition to them and they, they, they can run with it. And I know last episode was our sort of retrospective on the year, but I think this year we've we've really made an effort, a conscious effort to ditch clients that don't trust in our creativity for whatever reason yeah. and, you know, gather more clients that do. It's really got me thinking about the clients we work with. And I know it's a, an important issue anyway, but if I'm working marketing for say 30 more years through this company, I touch lots of other projects, but I might not fully handle a client, but let's say on average 10 clients a year, that's, that's only for the rest of my life, 300 clients I'm going to work with. And it's just uh, a bit of a reminder to be choosy. I think, and go with those that you really vibe with and want to want to push forward and do the stuff that you want to do. Yeah. We spoke about it previously. It's about building a partnership with those people rather than like yeah. a service client relationship and the clients that we're working with currently. We do have that, that really nice partnership with them. They trust our creativity. They trust our expertise. Um, yeah. And we, we guide them through their marketing journey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, wh where we were before as Future Proof Films when we just did video production, we had clients that we worked with constantly. Yeah, yeah. We got a call today with one of the clients we've been working with for maybe six years. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely easier for us to work with clients long term now that yeah. we offer all of these extra peripheral services. And not peripheral as in like not as important, but as in like all these services that combine with yeah. video Complement and visual content and things, yeah. to like, you know, make campaigns worthwhile. Yeah, and it's even though we had those those clients that we would work with regularly, it's still project-based stuff. So you're still yeah. sort of handing it over yeah. at the end and leaving them to it where, yeah. yeah, perhaps you don't need that partnership. But as we've switched over, some of those clients weren't suitable and that's okay. Yeah. Well, let's raise the spirits, all three of them. Three Christmas spirits. Pa past, like you just saw present, a ghost. Future. <laughs> <laughs> let's raise the spirits and get into the main topic. Yeah, yeah which is going to be around Christmas marketing. We've all seen the big splashy ads, but I really want to look at what people can learn from those big players in Christmas marketing. Is it something people should be ambitious with and strive for? And then what we've been doing for ourselves, what we do for our clients typically at Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, you know, by the time people hear this, it's probably too late, but store it for next year. Yeah. I, th I think a big part of, uh, at the heart of every single great ad is story. Yeah but especially so at Christmas. So I think you don't need massive production values to nail story. No. You just need, you know, pen and paper, yeah. keyboard and, a, you know, your laptop, whatever, to nail story. That's yeah. what you need. And, yeah, you could have the super high production of the John, a John Lewis advert or something like that. Yeah. But for most businesses, they can't afford that. So I think there's a really, really great opportunity to try and come up with some kind of great ad story yeah. And then just rein it in for production. So, for instance, there's the skateboard one this year. Who, I can't remember who I think that is John Lewis. Is that the John Lewis one? Yeah. Okay, cool. The, the skateboard one, I've seen it a few times. That could very easily have been shot for a, you know, an SME budget. Yeah, a sm yeah. A small budget, a small company budget. Because it's mostly, well, it could mostly just be, you know, shaky handy cam type footage yeah, of yeah. that dad practicing a skateboarding. Yeah. And then there's that, just that final shot at the end, isn't there? Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, he ends up adopting a girl who is into skateboarding. And yeah. that's how he bonds with her. Yeah. And the message of that, I think, is a child's not just for Christmas, a child's for the rest of their life, right? I think it's more just uh, dads are fun. Yeah. Yeah, cool dads. Cool dads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but it, it's interesting that people, it's interesting that companies have still gone for the big budget angle. We mentioned the JD one where they're using YouTubers and lots of YouTube stuff. You get away with lower production value. Yeah. But they've really gone big on it. Yeah. And, oh, get, and get in those. Areas. Yeah. I, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying if you have a budget, don't go for the big budget ones, because obviously, as we all know, the larger the budget for something, the the better you can make something. So that doesn't necessarily mean the story will be better. The story yeah, is the story, yeah. but the quality will be better. So yeah. if your if your branding is all about, you know, um, high quality, John Lewis is about high quality stuff. Yeah. They, they're going to want a high quality, big production yeah. ad. If you're a bit more kind of DIY, um, let's say like offended marketing, okay, yeah. they could yeah, do yeah. a low budget one because they do loads of kind of like lo-fi guerrilla marketing type yeah. stuff anyway. They could get away with doing that, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But if you then had like Marks and Spencers or Waitrose doing something like yeah. that, it might like denigrate a bit of the quality. Like yeah. you might lose a bit of like, you know, the, the brand quality. Yeah. So definitely there's still a point for going for big production things, but I also think there's room for lower production projects as well. Yeah. I, I think, I, I know you said the story might not change exactly, but one thing money does buy you is time. So time would be spent refining that story, making sure that, you know, it comes across in the best way it can do. Yeah, budget could also buy you writers. Budget could also buy yeah. you people to create that story for you. So yeah, yeah obviously budget, budget still helps having a larger budget. So for a lo-fi thing, you could see uh, what's the Moz Def Jack Black, Be Kind Rewind. You could see something like that, like a hand-stitched version of what would normally be a glossy one. There's an opportunity there for a company to pick that up. Yeah. Maybe to subvert, you know, the Christmas message in a cool way as well. Yeah. I, I always love the Be Kind Rewind thing for when, like, people pitch, like, DIY type things because it's still a Hollywood film. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's yeah, a Hollywood yeah, film yeah. with a massive budget. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you could just do the Be Kind Rewind thing. Yeah. It's a, it's still they've got a massive budget yeah. still, yeah. but they're doing the lo-fi like thing yeah. Yeah. with a massive budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think it's worth people doing? And I know it depends on market, their own sort of big production or big push at Christmas in, in a way, or is it all your eggs in one basket and it might not pay off? I don't even think it depends on the market necessarily. Because if you look at the John Lewis ad of the skateboard, skateboarding ad, yeah, it's nothing to do with John Lewis. No John Lewis ad has anything to do with John Lewis. But they do already have brand recognition. So it, it's a little, I, I guess if you're a company doing a B2B service that's in a niche area, yeah. you're not going to get away with doing a skateboard ad and then you're yeah. selling HR or something like that. I guess the thing there is then to align it to what your your market is currently surrounded by i guess so like the jd ad yeah they've capitalized on uh youtubers yeah foot asylums and the same thing with a lot of their ads yeah because yeah. the people that that they're targeting are mainly teenagers yeah are those people that are a bit younger probably in like a gen z kind of market yeah and they're all watching those people they're all they're all watching them they're all following them on instagram so having them within the ads made sense to them. Yeah. So say if it's a B2B and there's a certain area in your market that people are enjoying. Yeah. Capitalize on that. Like look look at it from a way of what will people in what will your audience enjoy watching? A Christmas ad I, I never think should be salesy. Yeah. So I even get, like the Asda ad is in the it's in their stores, yeah. but they've made it fun. They've made it creative. Yeah. I guess the universal thing is it's uh it's talking to your persona still. Yeah. And Christmas is an opportunity. It's almost a universal shared experience. So it's an opportunity to target your persona about those issues and, yeah. and, and, and how, you know, whatever business or service you provide affects that persona. Yeah. around the holiday season. It could season. be like accounting software, for example. And it's like, rather than doing your accounts this Christmas, spend time with your family. Like, yeah. let us deal with that, that oh, for yeah, you. Oh, yeah, you could see that being a great ad, yeah. Like, like something like that where it's targeting the pain point around Christmas, not just their pain point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, best ad you've seen then for Christmas of the big ones? Uh, I've, I've only seen the John Lewis one. I really like the Asda Elf one. Yeah, oh, I really enjoy yeah. the creativity. D just because I think the technique is, it's really easy, but really effective. Like we, we could do the Elf one, no problem. And we could, you know, have... We could do it. We it wouldn't have the rights. Us, it would take us a year and to we do wouldn't, it. We wouldn't have the rights and everything. Yeah. But the roto is not tough. If you look at the bit, as I'm thinking especially when he's skipping between the aisles. Right. It's so easy and it would just look wicked. I don't know. Like roto work is just, it's just time consuming stuff. 
But that ad probably did take six months to a year. Like and they were probably thinking about that last Christmas. Guys, guys, we, we always tell clients roto work takes at least six weeks. <laughs> That's minimum. true. Okay, yeah. We need to keep this. this Don't come to us for roto work. <laughs> and then, uh, but, but they've been smart about it. So there's loads of shots like from behind where you can't see his mouth, yeah. but they're using his voice and stuff like that. Just, just smart yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, I just, I just thought it was just, I thought it was just so well done. Like the level, the amount of like roto work and stuff that they've done to go into it and to like, to colour match it all. Yeah. Obviously that, yeah. Is, that is less than time consuming, but still it's an art. Yeah. Um, than the roto work. It's just, yeah, I thought it was really, really well. Yeah. Done. And the tone Expertly throughout done. and everything yeah. is nice and stuff. Yeah. I bet we could bloody have him skip behind here. Uh, yeah. In the audio I, podcast, I, dead easy. <laughs> so on to what's, what's good marketing campaigns that we've seen at a lower level or, or that we've been talking to our clients about. There's a tendency across the board for people to turn their Google ads off. But for those clients of ours that even even they've notched down the budget but left some running, it's really good to tweak your messaging so it's all around, not Christmassy, but you know they're reading it at the Christmas period, all for the next year messaging. You know, hit the hit the ground running with this and solve solve your problem early with this. What whatever the messaging might be for the relevant yeah. ads, but leaving them running over Christmas, you get so much more reach for the cost like cost per click comes down because your competitors have turned their ads off so you know cheaper clicks there are definitely still people working over christmas as well and, it, and sometimes the more senior people in between christmas and new year they'll be catching up on emails they'll be making sure that they're not sort of leaving it till january to then come back yeah. to thousands of emails so the people that are kind of working on the business rather than in it yeah. They're still going to be looking for, say if it's an L&D company, they're still going to be looking for ways to yeah. develop their people in January. Yeah. So it's kind of targeting those personas. So maybe it's not even just keeping your specific ads you're running now on. Yeah, Take a think of who those top level decision makers are yeah. and how can you tailor your ads to those? Yeah, How could you adjust your copy to make it seem, to make sure it's applied correctly for those people? We spoke just before we came on air about how next week's the week just before Christmas and we was going to have it off, but we might do a couple of days so we can work on the business. So that would speak to that sort of yeah. demographic. Yeah. And then I think people, we, we've seen great stats from downloads over Christmas, as, as particularly guides, if you've yeah. got a guide on your service over Christmas. And the reason is, I think it feels really productive for heads of departments like, you know, they're already in the Christmas feel, but it's a guide to, for next year, but you're getting it now and it feels like yeah. productive now. Do, so, do you reckon it's a New Year's resolution type thing as well? Like, what, what yeah. Do you reckon the best time is to market people to try and get in on the New Year's resolution wave? Yeah. Like those people who are like, you know, this year my marketing's going to step up. I'm going to do this in marketing. I'm going to I'm gonna get that, you know, that marketing campaign locked down January, February. Yeah, t typically they run in January just because it's a nice com to come back thing. But I think you can be the first first to do it if you're hitting that from Boxing Day, basically. I think, yeah, I think there's both. I think you could even start marking that in December because it's like what preparing you for January. Yeah. But it's even, I think, personally, if I'm reading something about New Year's resolutions in December, yes, I'm still thinking about them. But it's more in January when you're, you're starting the year off. Yeah. It's those New Year's resolutions you're putting in place. So marketing them in December's fine to keep yourself front of mind. Yeah. But then hammering it home, you know what I mean? Yeah, in between Christmas and New Year, the first week of January. Yeah. Kind of hammering that then yeah. as well to make sure that people are applying those things. You you might get the early birds as well doing it that way. And with your automated remarketing, that just might be the first touchstone. But then you can yeah. you, you can keep topping it up to bring it into the January thing. Yeah. Webinars are a great, obviously now I think it's a bit too late for this year, but even next year sort of thinking about webinars in december yeah especially sort of the week beginning is it the 10th this year yeah. um and the week beginning the 18th those two weeks people are still working but a lot of them are kind of winding down aren't they for christmas yeah, yeah. so attending a webinar to them is kind of a bit easier but you're still marketing to them you're still giving them information yeah they're still knowing about your business side note i'm doing a webinar christmas day just to get some time away from the family nice what's it going to be on uh it's going to be like the power of napping to business creativity and yeah. it's going to be a communal nap about 4 p.m after like lunch and before you know the the 
supper food comes out. I like it. I'm imagining it's a audio camera off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just whale noises. So going back a little bit further, when do you think the best time is to start looking at your Christmas marketing? All campaigns need a good couple of months, don't they, really? Yeah. If you're, do, if you're planning something big, like, oh, let's actually push the boat out and try and do our own version of the John Lewis ad or whatever guys that might be, I, I guess that's going to start. When, when do you think John Lewis start? Now? Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I yeah. think yeah, I think it would be the year, yeah. sort of the year prior. Yeah. They or prob- the Christmas prior. They probably have like just stories banked. Yeah, just ideas banked Start kicking, anyway. kicking yeah. those ideas around, yeah. I, I was uh, reading about how most campaigns should start the day after Halloween, basically. So yeah. as soon as you've finished Halloween, your stuff around Halloween, if you are doing anything around Halloween, that's when you need to start thinking about Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go with that. And it might be that within your sector, actually, the big push, we know for L&D, there's a big push in September, October, yeah. and then it goes a bit quieter. So you could probably start a little earlier, depending on when those, you know, peak parts of your season are, I guess. Yeah. So we're chatting about digital marketing. Yep. What do you reckon about physical marketing for Christmas? I love the idea of it. And we're sending things out to our clients this year. But I think it's a little harder. Again, not bringing up the pandemic again, but since the pandemic, hybrid workings obviously had a massive boom. Yeah. And more people are working over the, all over the world from their, from their homes and from offices. So understanding where to send things can be a little bit difficult. Yeah. So say if you're you're not asking individuals for their addresses and you're sending it to an office, it could also be a peer box office or it could yeah, also yeah. Be, be things that people aren't going to pick up until January and if you're sending them a hamper full of food, yeah. isn't really, really, it isn't really great. But I do love the, I love the idea of it. And we are sending it. We are asking our clients for their addresses and yeah. sending yeah, them. Yeah, I, I think if you're a business where you've got the clients where you can pick up the phone and ask for their address, great, yeah. That, that, do that if if it's a if company that deals with you know maybe thousands of clients at a distance almost then you could do vouchers you could do, do a, a christmas you, card you, even just a christmas card christmas card yeah you but you could do a I, I like i like giving stuff so you could do a five pound cost of voucher or something yeah. like that for everyone have a coffee on us over christmas yeah but just just bringing it back slightly then so we are doing gifts this year and we're sending out some stuff to clients and people supplies we've worked with, yeah. people we like. And it's going to be cool T-shirts. And the idea is that the T-shirts we like and the T-shirts we're going to wear and, uh, you know, br- bring them into the Bright family a little bit. Yeah, I think the main thing when sending things out is making sure you're not sending tat out, if that makes sense. And what, yeah. I don't mean tat as in like you, you're obviously not going to send rubbish out to your clients but stuff that they're not going to use. Yeah. Like if you're just sending, say, a mug and everyone else that year is sending yeah. a mug. Cheap pens and loads of plastic and stuff, stuff, like, stuff, yeah, like, that. stuff Novel, like that. Novelty stuff. Like the T-shirts, people might not like them and they might not wear them. They're quite discreet purposely, yeah. so they would. But if they, they don't, they can donate them to charity. I was just about to say, yeah. People yeah. will wear them because they are yeah. still T-shirts. So. And they're yeah. also like really good quality, ethically sourced. Yeah. So they can wear them to bed. Yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's more like or, or sending them, them food or something they're actually going to use. Yeah. Think about what you're sending rather than just like, ah, oh, we need to send something to our clients. Let's send some yeah. pens or something. So the benefits of sending it out, though, is it's a fun little reminder you can put some nice things in there, let people know that they matter to you because our clients have mattered this year. You know, every every business, the clients matter and the customers matter. So it's nice if you can find a way to say thanks. It's also a very cost effective thing to do as well because like we, we send these things out and like you say, we've, we've then become front of mind. Yeah. Physical evidence is always something within everyone's marketing mix. So having something that physically represents your brand always front of mind, like you say, Drew, yeah. is never a bad thing. Yeah. And it can be, it can be something, it doesn't have to be, say like, like you say, this year we're sending out t-shirts and things and we're doing that package for every client, but you could also send out things that are personalized to each yeah. client. Yeah. We did that last so year, didn't we? We did so- last year. We've, we've, we've got a call with the client who we gifted a pigeon to last year, a, uh, a fluffy pigeon, not a real pigeon. Yeah. Um, because we did an animated video with loads of pigeons in. Yeah. So there was this basic pigeons became this big thing with the client with us and the yeah, client yeah the, the client ended up doing pigeon sounds for the animated video yeah. it was brilliant had loads of fun with them always yeah. have lots of fun with this client um so we sent him a pigeon we had a client who features zebras a lot of the time and we adopted a zebra as yeah. well in their name which was cool 
we had a company which featured nebulas and space yeah. stuff so we bought them you know a bit a plot on the moon yeah the zebra the pigeon and the moon bit they were they were all great gifts yeah really good gifts it sounds like a good name for a book as well yeah also so if you're if you're a client of ours have something obvious we could buy you a present for <laughs> yeah uh, if, it, if it's really generic stuff we're gonna struggle with presents okay yeah yeah so what are some of the things we've advised our clients to do over this christmas period jess so over the last few years, we've tried different assets. So I think two years ago, we did an advent calendar with some people. Yeah. And what were the good things? What were the bad things about that? So the advent calendar was a great asset for them. They was able to give a lot of content away to their, to their audience. It was just one of the things that it got quite samey. Yeah, because obviously an advent calendar, it's the same advent calendar for yeah. 12 days. I think we did it for. So every day it starts off with the advent calendar. Yeah. So very quickly, the assets got sort of a decrease in engagement Yeah. because everyone thought they'd already seen it. They get they, blind they, to they, it, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So we moved away from that. Um, and then we tried some like feedback videos for one client. Yeah, they were um, good. Where it was it, it aligned to some of their services. But um, it was a it nice was a internal nice gift as well. Because yeah. they were giving feedback on each other and what yeah. they like about each other. It was, was a lovely cool. community post. Yeah. Um, and there was a few of those. We're creating this year um, an asset for a client um, where it's like stockings. Yeah. So it there, it's still the the idea of like the advent calendar, yeah. but it looks different every day. And there's fewer of them. The problem with an advent yeah. calendar is there's a pressure to do 25 things. Yeah. And by the 25th day, everyone's broke up anyway. So you you can't really roll a advent calendar out in November. That feels yeah wrong. yeah. So yeah, there. I'd say that's a that's a fallback. Like that's an issue with it. Yeah yeah definitely. So it was kind of creating unique assets that are going to stand out. Yeah. But also add similar value to, to their audience. So maybe it's a giveaway or an ebook that they can download, like you say, or a webinar for next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like the takeaways at this time of year. Yeah. And then the other thing I already mentioned it was the ads. So yeah. just doing some Christmas campaign ads. And when I say Christmas campaign, I don't mean it has to include Christmassy terms, but designed to come out over Christmas and yeah. set that up and, and try and resist turning off your ads because it's there's a real opportunity to get ahead of your competitors at this time of year, I think. Yeah, there's, there's loads of different options you could do. You, you mentioned the Advent thing, and I definitely agree the Advent thing is like a, uh, it's a difficult one to pull off strongly unless yeah. you're giving, I think I think giveaways have to feature quite heavily in a Advent calendar. Yeah. I think an Advent calendar, yeah, we're, I've seen it implemented really well for B2C as well. Yeah. When the advent calendars are kind of more giveaway based, but yeah. items and things like that, Codes, that can actually, yeah, yeah. That, that rather than thing. just a yeah. blog or an ebook type yeah. thing. Yeah, because it, it, well, it's like what what twenty five bits of value do you have that are so brilliant they could just be within an yeah. advent calendar that you've not mentioned anywhere else in the year? Yeah, because you know, it, I think you're gonna. I think most companies will struggle to pull yeah. out twenty five bits of yeah. super super strong, better than the rest of the year content. Yeah to make it worthwhile to fit inside an advent calendar. Yeah. Luckily, Christmas has got a few things. You could do 12 days of Christmas straight away. 12 days of Christmas, you yeah. It. We've got like a like a permanent advent calendar tree at our house for our son. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But every like third day, you've got to give him chocolate because he just loses interest. He's like, I've, I've, I've had two trains out of it now. I want some chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to keep giving him something like that, some like proper value, some chocolate value. But in terms of video stuff, yeah, I mean, you, you've kind of just, you kind of gone over it really. Like the, the the feedback one was brilliant. That was in like the phone jacker style, wasn't it? When we yeah. edited all those up, that was really fun. Yeah, it was a voice only brought to life through yeah. like slightly animated stock stuff. And so that was cool. Super easy content client side. They just had to record a memo on their phone, send it yeah. over to us, and then we did all of the animating on it. So super easy for the client to yeah. actually create. It's feedback. It's genuine feedback. So it's feedback they want to create for each other. Yeah, yeah. So from a client side, if you're looking for like low effort stuff on your side, then that kind of a project is really, really simple. That reminds me of what I was going to say with the John Lewis temple thing is as well, a good idea, more often than not, will win out. That's a great example. The feedback one was a good idea that didn't take a lot of money and investment, certainly not a John Lewis level, and uh, a great series of videos that came out over Christmas and formed a, a wonderful campaign. Yeah, yeah. I think it also just gets the team sharing things, doesn't it? As opposed to, we, yeah, we, we always yeah. advise that the team share, on, especially on LinkedIn, rather yeah. than it just being company posts. Yeah. Stuff like that, it's 
they are they're great community posts you're going to want to share them people will hopefully want to interact yeah. with them yeah and, and christmas should have a bunch of community team stuff anyway yeah you know across all, all platforms yeah it's a great time of year for that definitely. definitely nice i think there's some good value there loads of good value 25 days worth <laughs> oh <laughs> fill up your stock in i've got a great joke for you guys uh why is santa's sack so big because he's got all of our Brightcast content in there, and it's great value. That wasn't the punchline. <laughs> it wasn't the punchline I used last night. So there's loads of great value in the in the Brightcast, I think. Uh, but it's too late for companies to do anything about it. So do you reckon next year we should do a Christmas Brightcast in, what do you reckon, October? Yeah, well, you said the day after Halloween. Day after Halloween, yeah. I think we'll do that. Yeah, so we'll get the tree up. We can have a tree up then until Christmas. <laughs> yeah, the tree's gonna be up for two months. Yeah, Jess, what do you three reckon? Three months. Three months. You <laughs> You're loving it. That's amazing. <laughs> it's a Christmas one. Uh, I guess we just sing our way out of this. Yeah. Favorite Christmas song? Favorite. Mine is uh, "Lonely This Christmas" by Mud. I think mine's "Last Christmas." Wham. Yeah. It's no mud. Mine's uh, Bob Dylan. Must be Santa. Must be Santa's good. Yeah. Yeah. Love that one. Uh, a modern one. Kelly Clarkson. She just comes out the gate with it. She comes out hot. I don't think you can beat the classics, though. Wizard. Slade. Okay. And on that note, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Good King Wenceslas last looked out on the feast of Stephen. For all <laughs> And to all the listeners, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from all of us here at Bright.